What the frick? What is that? Huh? What was that? Well, that's oxygen. Oh, I have a mask. Yeah. Okay, we got our weather, our altimeter set. Pulmonary traffic skywagon 26 Romeo Hotel is taking active runway 234 west departure. Pullman. Pull traffic. TBM 860 Charlie Alpha is taxiing from the ramp to runway 23 Pullman. Okay, we're on our way to the runway, so we are heading altitude, transponder, and toga. Pulmonary traffic sky 1561 Yankee. Seven miles to the north, 3,500, inbound for landing, runway 23, Pullman. Pullman traffic, TBM 860, Charlie Alpha, take a runway 23 straight out, departure to the west, Pullman. Okay. Hey, last thing we need to check is the prop governor. Okay, come back. Takeoff power is... Speed is by both sides. Tate. Pullman traffic. Brakes. Cooper Cup 4159 Sierra taxiing Alpha to runway 23. Pullman. Uh, damper on. Pullman air traffic. Sky 1561 Yankee, 5 miles to north, 3,500 inbound to 23. Pullman. Okay. Flight level change is. 30. Pull traffic TBM 860 Charlie Alpha is a slight right turn and departing to the west. Pullman. Climbing at 130 knots, climbing up to 17.5. Our heading is straight to Seattle and we don't see any traffic there, here, so we're going to talk to Seattle. We're going to go ahead and uh, turn our separator off. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put in 850 mode. Let's go ahead and get our clearance, because we haven't talked to Seattle Center yet. Seattle Center, good afternoon. TBM 860, Charlie Alpha, 10 miles west of Pullman, 9,000, IFR, Boeing. And uh, TBM uh, to the west of Pullman, was that 860, Charlie Alpha? A farm, sir, Charlie Alpha. 860, Charlie Alpha, squawk 4741, radar contact, and be looking for your Boeing field IFR. 4741, A-Farm, 0 Charlie Alpha. And TBM 0 Charlie Alpha, Roger, clear to Boeing, so they're Port Skyco, intersection, that's Sierra Kilo, Yankee Kilo, Oscar, remain to be afraid of 8th arrival, climb maintain for level 230. TBM 860, Charlie Alpha, clear to Boeing, via direct Skyco, you afraid of 8, maintain uh, 230, TBM 0 Charlie Alpha. Okay, I can't remember if I said 230 twice, but uh, arrival, Skyco, on the afraid of 8, which... We would get anyway. Yes, we do want that one. 1.9 Air 3, contact about five miles to the southwest of Shawin Airport. One eight seven three zero zero zero. Turn it around now. See, look at that. Yeah, first so time ever for for Kai. Five miles south of my airport. Say so. altitude leaving. Uh, I think I've sat here before, but not in a flight though. I don't yeah. think. So basically, what's going on here is that we have to have some way of getting into Seattle, right? He needs to know where we're going, we need to know where we're going, and he needs to have a... He needs to know kind of what we're doing. Because he's an air traffic controller, he wants everybody to come into Seattle the right way, to maintain the harmonious peace that exists in the skies above Seattle. And as a result of that, it's putting us on what's called an arrival, which means everybody that's coming into Seattle, he's kind of putting them on a similar road, and then he's sequencing them so that they come in in the right order, everybody gets in line, and he doesn't want to mix Number the planes eight, either, uh, because he doesn't want like a slow plane getting on the flight path, flight path with any type of super fast plane, because that fast plane's going to overtake the slow plane. Just monitor my torque here. It's always in the climb, we have to monitor the torque. And the descent, you kind of do too, unless you take it out of 850. But um, we want to have max torque, but as we climb up, our torque will go down because the air gets thinner and thinner. We keep on having to push the torque up a little bit, but we don't want to over torque. And that's and the problem in the TBM Roger, because that'll hurt the engine. Here shortly. He wants to get us all on the same street, like the highway in the sky. In this case, and this is usually the case because usually Seattle's landing south, he's put us on what's called the Afraid of 8 arrival. And uh, procedures, to make sure the arrival, arrival. Afraid of 8. So, so here's the Afraid of 8 arrival. 
Okay, so this is my map and it tells me how I get in on Euphrata 8. It doesn't make a lot of sense in the beginning, but you'll learn after a while to read these things, kind of like it's a, it's a different language. Those orange colors, those are terrain. That's mountains and stuff that you don't want to hit. Okay, we'll do our out of 10 three, checklist three, first. Uh, um, hotel, we're going to turn off our lights because uh, we're almost at 18,000. We'll do our out of 18 too. Standard. Our fuel tanks are balanced and cabin pressurization rate is good. Where's my checklist? Ending pulse lights are off. Crew oxygen on, fuel gauges, oh, 21.5. See, I knew there was something I was forgetting. 21.5. Guard, and up to. Okay, out of 18, uh, checklist accomplished. The so, then we see oh, yeah, uh, there are some radio check. You altimeters setting away. stuff. From Euphrata VOR, past Euphrata R266, so that's a compass point off of the Euphrata VOR. Uh, okay, see, that's 260. That's get you pointed that yeah, way. Much but see, we don't want to go all up there. We don't yeah, want to go all the way up there, so he just cleared us straight to Sky Go. Usually, usually we, we actually do have to start at Euphrata, but he's must not be busy. And then three landing zero south, zero eight, and we okay, do have uh, from Sky Go, then uh, pain R85, so the 85 zero radial zero off pain, which is this VR here. Zero, zero Charlie Alpha, contact sail center 128.45. 28.45, give me up there traffic at 8. Seattle Center, good afternoon, TBM 860, Charlie Alpha, climbing 230. You go, Maintain 60, Charlie Alpha, Seattle Center, climb maintain, follow level 240. Maintain 240, Charlie Alpha. Okay, 24 set. Coming in, uh, pass R85 to Huvis. So Huvis is just a point on the map. And these are all five letter points on the map. Then on Seattle, uh, radial 23 to Heather. So it says, oh, then hang a left and go to Heather. And that's what this is. And then. Landing south, depart Heather, heading 250, expect radar vectors to final approach course. So it's like, well, once you get to Heather, depart at the certain heading. Okay, see, what, see what's happening, depart at the 163 heading. And we'll tell you what you do after that. That's really what this map says right here. The key for us though is that we're not landing here. And so whenever we get this, we go to Skyco and all it does is kind of funnel us into Skyco. And then after Skyco, we get vectored to the final approach course to Boeing. I bet you were really hoping to understand that today. I'm not saying I was expecting to, but I'm going to scrounge for food. That is my kid's favorite thing to do in the plane is what is in the plane and can it be eaten? We need to do a video on plane snacks. One taco. One taco just means we have a thousand feet to go till we hit our altitude. So it's a reminder to make sure the plane's doing what it's supposed to do. It also just so happens exactly. to be the channel. Yes, exactly. That's why we called it that one taco. Yeah. And it does look like we're leveling off here at 240. At this point in the flight, a lot of times I'll pull out the armrest. I'm in the lap of luxury now. I got the arm rest. Okay, well, I mean, that does happen. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Kai, it wasn't me. I just pulled it out and it came off. Dave has had this issue too. That's all you get, Kai. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean all I get? That's it. That's all the armrest you get. And don't try to angle for any more than that because you are going to break it. Okay, we're going to do a bit in the video now about uh, database updates in the plane. What are those? You have to put so databases in the plane to tell it to do certain things, like to, for it to fly and approach. It has to have the database information in there. Because if you tell the plane to go somewhere and doesn't know where the waypoint is, then you can't fly there. All the approaches, the, the charts change, and so you have to get updates. Wait, is that what you did before we came here? Yes, although it didn't, it didn't totally work. So uh, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying me. If there are times when you have questions or you have comments, just make them. Like if you're like, oh, I could say something really smart right now, just say it. And if it's stupid, then Mom will cut it out later. Okay. <laughs> okay. If that's how it is. Oh, okay. So those are the points right up ahead. Like right, you can see them. It says that it already knows where we're gonna go. We're not gonna do that. We're we're, we're gonna go uh, out that way. Okay. Oh, cause we're landing at the. Yeah, we're landing Boeing Field. And so it, they're going to just take us out there. It's Boeing Field approach is super fun because you go right by downtown Seattle. It's really okay. cool. Let's talk about databases. I remember two years ago, we went on a trip as a family to this get together for a group that I'm in. And there was all these kids there. And you have turned yourself into an amazing like Beat Saber player. Uh, one of the best 14 year old, 13 year old probably at that time Beat Saber players in the world at least in that hotel that day. And uh, it just so happened that as part of the festivities, they had rented a 
uh, a VR set that you could play Beat Saber on, right? Is that right? Okay. And I was shocked because I came into the room and the kids were standing around literally chanting your name. The interesting thing about that to me is that they were chanting your name. They weren't chanting the game's name. What that suggests is that these products that we interact with, they exist to make us feel great. Because the point isn't like, wow, look at all this that I'm doing on Beat Saber. What an awesome game. The point is, look at me. Like, I am an awesome player. There is a woman who wrote a book and also has online videos on product development, and she's from the software realm. But the things that she teaches, I think, are really powerful. The user shouldn't be thinking, like, wow, look what an awesome product this is. The user should be thinking, I am doing awesome. And that's, that's how they feel. That's how you feel with great products. That puts this whole G1000 database update process in context because I CDN never feel Jerry awesome. Charlie Alpha, the center main same level 220. Maintain 220 TBM 0 Charlie Alpha. Okay, so let's go down to 22 and let's do vertical speed and start down. So 22 is set, but I don't know why he wants me down this soon because uh, we haven't even crossed the Cascades yet, but I think it's for crossing traffic or something. Uh, descent checklist, torque in 850 mode, fuel gauges are balanced, cabin altitude, uh-huh, field. We're gonna set it at the field elevation. Actual separator as required. I I mean, we wanna turn it on before we get in the cloud. Well, it's, we can actually turn it on. Airspeed has to be below 200 knots indicated to turn on the inertial separator. There we have it, separator's on. Product should make me I feel like I am awesome, and yet I feel like a total loser every time I try to update uh, the database in here. And it starts out with their process for updating the database uh, because it's so difficult to do. And some people talk about cognitive load or cognitive leaks, like these things that happen when you're using pro uh, products. And well-designed products exist to reduce your cognitive load and those cognitive leaks. And they can design in things to help solve those problems. Let's begin at the very United start, which is you have to update the databases in this airplane or else it's not safe to fly. Because if somebody updated a chart and you're flying without a date charts and you load up an approach and you fly the approach, you could put yourself and others in danger by not using the correct data. So every time those charts are published, you have to have some way of putting them into the computer here. Okay, that makes sense. First challenge is even understanding how that system works. And the way that I think it works, although I'm not advising anybody to do this, but this is just what I've done the last two times, is you take this card this card and this card, which are the bottom cards. This is PFD, MFD, PFD. And you go and you uh, have to do this at a computer with an SD card reader. And you download this program called JPD or something like that. Then you can download the databases onto these cards and these cards then put them back here. Now, the first thing is we're trying to make sure that everybody that buys these databases and puts them on the cards is paying in the right way. It starts with some restrictive stuff. So first of all, finding out what to buy is a huge challenge. They have all these different pilot packs and different databases for different areas, and there are like 23 of them, and you can get all of them. 2705 TBM 0 Charlie Alpha, get A. Center TBM 860 Charlie Alpha 220. Grand, coming in broken. Center TBM 860 Charlie Alpha 220, you're coming in broken. Center 860 Charlie Alpha 220. Even understanding what to buy is a huge challenge. I eventually settled on this thing, which is like, okay, there's like Mexico, Canada, U.S. charts. I think it, it was for a year and it cost 1300 bucks. I paid the money, but even before you pay them the money, there starts to be problems because they start asking you questions about things you have no idea about. So first of all, they're like, what is your system ID? System ID, what the freak is that? And so I had to make a trip out one, to two, the two, airport three, four, and look for my system ID. Turns out that it's in this thing. One, Here is the system ID, it's this 24D1 whatever thing. So there's that thing and I think they're doing that just to make sure that um, you don't buy databases for like two airplanes because they want to make sure that, that you can only use it in this airplane. Then they ask you what version of software you have. This, I have no idea. It says system software version 0719.17. They said that they're uh, version 7, version 8, and version 15. I didn't know which version it was because that's it doesn't say it's version 7. It says it's 0719.17. So I just guessed on those things, then purchased it, then started to download it to the system. 
And this software is rickety and old. Its user interface is terrible. And you don't really know what you're supposed to download to the to the cards and what each database does. So you can download each each database separately. There's like nav data, there's terrain data, there's all this stuff. And you don't really know what to do. And plus, when reading online, there's supposed to be like this one little folder that you go in and delete on the SD card before you even do all this stuff. So like you're way far into it. I make two trips out to the airport just to purchase, just to be able to buy the database in the first place. Then I'm still not sure that it's going to work. And I'm putting it on this little card. I put it in and you get to the point where you're going to turn on the battery and it's like you know who even knows what's going to happen in the plane is this going to break it is going to is this going to cause a problem and like it is just a total fiasco and the Delta dumbest part is that you have to do this every two months because as you can see mine is going to expire on on october 8th if i want to make a flight after october 8th i have to update uh, the databases now the funny thing is that everything that i said here there's probably mistakes with because i don't even understand it but this this part of flying to me is extremely frustrating. It's not a well-made product because no one... Maintain one 6,000 TBM Zero Charlie Alpha. I do agree that most products should be made so that people would like to use them. Throw Garmin and the plane manufacturers a bone because in terms of cars, there's probably orders of magnitude more cars in the U.S. than there are planes. So the volume isn't there to really make sure they do an awesome job with the user interface. And in general, I think they did well, just as in the way that this interface works, but this chart updating thing is a nightmare. And it's such a nightmare that there's a product out there called Bat Wombat, and I think you pay like 300 bucks for it. And the only thing that it does is it allows you to update your databases from an iPad while you're sitting there in the airplane instead of doing it at your computer at home. I mean, that's ridiculous. Oh, so the autopilot will level you out when you're at your altitude that you want to be at, but it doesn't actually move this. So this isn't a legitimate, this is just input that it takes electronically and then puts in your pitch, right? Uh, but what do you mean? Well, I guess it makes more sense than the GBM, because in the 182... Again, 3007. 3007, maintain 1, 1,000 TBM through Charlie Alpha. See the banana? Is that the blue line? Bana banana is like, hey, at what point are you going to hit that, al that altitude that you have set in the system? Ah, okay. So, you know, I don't need to be 11,000 before Skyco. And Charlie it just Alpha pushes on my ear. Cross Skyco at 1, 1,000 TBM through Charlie Alpha. Okay, so um, we're going to go Skyco. Now watch this. I'm going to say 10. Vertical track. 108. Then we're going to do VNAV. So what that does is it says, he told me cross Skyco at 10,000. Speed, cross Jackson at 1, 2,000. So I have it set in here now. Nine and a half to 1, 5,000. So I'm going to set 10. So I also have to set it in, in my, in, it's, so this is the altimeter, this is my altitude setting. So I say I want to go Skyco at 10,000. And so I tell it to do that, and then I do VNAV, and then I and then I tell it to VNAV to Skyco at 10,000. So if I go VGO net, VNAV direct, Skyco at 10,000, activate, okay? So now, see this little pink thing right here, what it's coming down, and I have VNAV arm. Alpha contact, approach on 1, 2, 3, 4, 9. 23, 9, TBM 0, Charlie, if I get A. Seattle Approach, good afternoon, TBM 860, Charlie Alpha, descending 10,000, Oscar. Number 860, Charlie Alpha, Seattle Approach, thanks. Plan vectors to 1-4 right at Boeing. Well, close there, Charlie Alpha. Hey, what taco? Look at those mountains right up there. Those are pretty cool. They are very cool, yeah. We're close. Those are the reason why they're kind of vectoring us, and that they won't get us too close to those mountains, but in fact, that's why we're stopping at 10 here, so. Oh, okay, yeah, I was going to say they're closer than usual. Are there any of the Washington's five tallest? -ish? Yeah, there's Mount Rainier right over our left wing. Ah, okay. The one thing we do have coming up in Seattle is while we are under Class Bravo shelf, you can only go 200 knots. And I think within Class Bravo, you can only go 250 knots. And 250 knots indicated never an issue for us, but we can get over 200 knots under the Class Bravo shelf. So we're gonna wanna keep our speed right around 200 when we uh, get close to Seattle. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, descend and maintain 8,000. Maintain 8,000, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. Okay, we're gonna go down. We always get these step downs into Seattle. And it should be giving us a heading here in just a minute as well. So we'll get ready for that. Because here's a return to go to SeaTac, but we ain't going to SeaTac, so he's he's gonna give us a heading. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around here. This is just really beautiful out uh, out the Shell window. Approach, Ryzen 2637, information echo, currently 16,000 to cross Jackson, 12,250. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, fly heading 250, vectors to final. 
250, TBM 0, Charlie Alpha. See, I told you he was going to give us a heading. 250 is our heading. 25 is set, and one taco. Number 0, Charlie Alpha, descend to maintain 5000. Okay, maintain 5000, TBM 0, Charlie Alpha. TBM 0, Charlie Alpha, contact Seattle approach 125.9, have a nice day. 25.9, TBM 0, Charlie Alpha, good day. And actually, we're going to. Uh, select our approach here. Yeah, five forty six sixty one. Maintain your uh, forward speed. Okay. Right. Seattle approach. CBM eight six zero. Charlie for descending five thousand. CBM eight six zero. Charlie Seattle approach. Uh, welcome to send and maintain uh, three thousand. Maintain three thousand. TBM zero. Charlie off up. Let's get set up here and start slowing slow things down. Zero, three zero eight. So on this approach, I can go to three hundred and eight feet. Zero, Load four it. zero Yankee descend and maintain Enter. three thousand. And. You can see why it's, it's so complex here is look at all the airplanes that are up here. There's, I mean, what I can tell on here, there's probably 30 air, aircraft in just on this screen here. So every black and white diamond is an aircraft. Four one, Mike. Roger, is that a full stop? And then there's the number of feet difference between us right there. That's 4,200 feet below us. Uh, okay. It's 4,000 feet above us. If I want to go to traffic really quick, I'll just go traffic. And that's the one right around us. So there there are a few even close to us here. They're like 2,000 feet under, 3,000 feet under. Yep. Turn right you in, keep forgetting that traffic, clouds aren't just made of nothing. Four miles northwest, that altitude indicates 4,000. Well, yeah, that's that's something I didn't even know before I started flying. Is that number zero, Charlie Alpha, to send and maintain two thousand two hundred. Maintain two thousand two hundred TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. And number zero, Charlie Alpha, turn left, heading of uh, two three zero. Two three zero TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. Clouds are water vapor, so they have substance. Well, exactly. No. I exactly. Mean, they yeah, are actually, I thought that they were not even vapor. They're it's condensed it's water. Liquid water. Yeah. I forget all the time that I mean, when you fly through them, you're not just flying through air. There's actual stuff there to make you shake around, which is interesting. Exo jet to exactly. Roger, reduce speed to one seven zero. And also, there's a lot of temperature differences, which make four, which zero, makes Yankee the wind move, thing, which two, five, mean, means turbulence. So, all wind in the world is caused by temperature differential. It's all wind. You know, and all weather is caused by differences in temperature. So it's a really yeah, interesting thing. But you're absolutely right. And if you had asked me that, I was like, oh, what are clouds? It's like, oh, it's water vapor. No, <laughs> it's visible. Yeah, flight 4661, able to water. procedure at this time. I have multiple aircraft inbound for so uh, approaches The other thing time. that's tricky in this airplane that I had to learn and that I'm still learning is yeah, torque management. So torque management in your approach phase. As soon as you level off, you're going to start to slow down because it, when you're going downhill, some of your speed is, comes from the fact your nose is, your nose is pointed down. So November 40 Yankee traffic, 12 o'clock and three miles northbound, 2,400 indicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out over the lake and we're going to hit this line. And November we're 2 1 whiskey, uh, hang one, left. Two zero vector. So this is this something Renton. different? Because there's no black square inside there. That's yeah, interesting. I don't know. Number uh, 4 1 Mike, turn left, hitting zero, 05 zero, Oh, I think it, the reason it's white is because it's so close to our altitude. Oh, uh, so it's only 500. You can feet look for it. You can, it it's just right over there. It's right back over our right wing. Might be able to see it. I don't know if I'm not looking in the right place. It's hard to see planes. They have to get pretty close before you can actually see them. There are a lot of boats out. Must be a really nice day down there. Do what he does for me. Give me a turn. Number zero, Charlie Alpha. Turn left, heading one one zero to join the localizer. Sorry about that. Left one one zero, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. He, he was a little late on that, right? Yeah. I did say sorry, so. Uh, I, well, I, slowed I don't down blame too. him. I keep forgetting how actually big Seattle and its surrounding areas are. I have friends who live in Seattle, but I can't just ask them to meet up because they're like hundreds of miles apart. Yeah, it's a big place. I mean, in Pullman, there's only so far you can live from someone. Zero cockpit time. Zero cockpit, yes. Zero Shelly Alpha, you're clear of the ILS 14 right approach into Boeing Field, and you're five miles from Toge. Contact Boeing Tower today. Clear to ILS 14 right approach, uh, over to Tower TBM 860 Charlie Alpha. Tower TBM 860 Charlie Alpha, ILS 14 right approach. November 8. 6 0 Charlie Alpha, Bowling Tower, runway 1 4 right, clear to land, wind at 2 0 0 1 5. 1 4 right, clear to land, TBM 8 6 0 Charlie Alpha. And hey, our inertial separator is on. You're not already, squad VFR. Gear is coming down. VFR, Charlie. Oh. Kodiak 7 uh, Kilo, can I look at Randy and Whiskey Mike calling Bowling Tower second? 5 under their uh, 1 and a half mile. 470, I'll make my security and come down. Oh, look, there's a 2400 right above us there. Traffic at a 2 mile funnel for runway 14 right to TBM. Don't overfly and we'll be looking for traffic by my Bravo. Hey, inertial separator's on, gears down, 3 green. Yeah, there's a Flaps are full. Uh, holding the the runway is off, we're clear to land. Send direction to flight. Look 
Helicopter 8 Whiskey Mike, Path departing runway 14 left to pass behind you on a Mercer departure, Cessna. Minimums, minimums. Helicopter 8 Whiskey Mike, Roger. Proceed to Hangar 80, landing a beach on risk, wind 2404. And there's helicopter 34170 hotel going to our understand you're at Bravo 4 and say your request. Uh, we're at Bravo 6 and we'd like a south takeoff, south departure with uh, officer. Helicopter 17 hotel, full position. Holding, one two hotel. Helicopter 5 Mike Bravo, continue on the downwind. I'm going to call your base turn. There is traffic, it'll depart the we tried to arrival. Continuing on downwind and take call at 5 Mike Bravo. Member uh, Zero Charlie Alpha, stay parking. Water, Zero Charlie Alpha. Member Zero Charlie Alpha, roll out to Alpha Niner, turn left at Alpha Niner, then contact Ground Point Niner. Left on Alpha Niner, over to Ground, Zero Charlie Alpha. We are tired of our